regular of the City Council meeting scheduled for 5 p.m. April 21st will now come to order. Roll call. Councillor Lillis. Here. Councillor Rousey. Here. Councillor Hadrava. Here. Councillor Koivinen. Here. Mayor Vaisalovich. Here. Approval of minutes, City Council Workshop, April 7th. Approval of minutes, City Council meeting, April 7th. And approval of minutes, City Council Workshop, April 14th. If nobody has any uh, changes or questions, call for a motion that we approve these minutes. So moved. Motion made by Koivinen. Do I have a support? Support. Support by Lillis. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Approval of tonight's agenda. I've got one addition under new business, a donation request. That'll be item number six. Anybody else have any additions or changes? If not, call for a motion that we approve tonight's agenda with that change. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Drava. Do I have a support? Support. Worked by Rousey. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We have no appointments or presentation. At this point, we allow anybody from the audience five minutes to address the council, or we allow time at the end of the meeting. At this time, does anybody want to address the city council? Would you please come forward to the podium and identify yourself? Speaker thing, is this okay? Yes, we're perfect. Okay. Um, good afternoon. I'm April Howe. I am the wife of Officer Jesse Howe. Today, it's going to be asked for his termination. I'm not here to plead or beg for my husband's job. I would like to enlighten you on some behind the scenes information that will not be given to you today by Chief Quinn. It is my belief that the case against my husband is nothing more than a vindictive retribution since my husband first revealed not only the sexual discrimination practices against a female applicant, but the veteran discrimination against a National Guard member during the last hiring practice. The very moment he told me he would be reporting the chief and the deputy chief of these allegations, I knew I would be standing here today, and here I am. I have been instructed by my husband's lawyer to remind you that my husband is a nine-year military veteran, and he will be enacting the veteran's preference if he is terminated. First thing I'd like to note is that you'll be handing my husband's supervisory file. We like to refer to this as the super secret supervisory file since it was only discovered a month ago. This file is not his personal file, but documentation the chief has kept about my husband. The information is at points quite outlandish. It only gives the chief's view on issues and there's very limited and select information given. My husband has never had a chance to dispute anything in this file. Per union rules, this file can only be used for yearly evaluations and cannot be used for punishment or discipline. For a little humor, please notice the day the chief called my husband when my husband was home at lunch and left his, his phone in the squad car. He returned the call, but it was not prompt enough. It was for a favor to shoot beavers for lumber and motors. Okay. The second I'll mention is the agreement that was finally made between the city, my husband, and the union. This agreement was made for my husband to be returned to his sergeant title, not his job. The city is violating this contract at this time as well. The third item is for a fit for duty exam that Dr. Keller failed my husband on. I believe this was an extremely biased view by Dr. Keller for several reasons. First and most important reason is the doctor spent more time with the chief and deputy chief who made a personal 300 mile trip down to see this doctor to disclose information, including the super secret supervisory file. Second reason I believe this is biased is the doctor told my husband upon first meeting him that the most seasoned police veterans failed the testing. It's based for new employees only. The third reason is Dr. Keller's findings. There was clearly information conveniently left out and added information that could have only come from the chief or deputy chief. We will be appealing this fit for duty exam as well. My husband has been in weekly intensive therapy for the last six months with MAPS, which is a behavioral health facility that specializes in military law enforcement issues. His therapy, his therapist strongly disagrees with Dr. Keller 
and is willing to testify in a court of law as such. Especially since Dr. Keller stated he wanted to have his records released for MAPS so he could give a thorough review before he made his decision. MAPS never even received the medical release information for this. So it's obvious Dr. Keller did not base his review on that. Fourth item is the unfair and unjust punishment my husband has received. Are you aware that there is an Everett police officer who was charged with domestic violence after the fourth such call to his house? This officer was returned to work in two weeks with no discipline. My last item, since I'm running out of time, is to give back the subpoenas. The city has issued to myself and my 11-year-old daughter in their complaint against my husband. I'm sure the city will find a better use for these funds. At this time, I'd like to personally thank you for all the stress and anxiety you've caused her. I implore you to look at what you're not seeing presented today. There is much bigger picture going on than what the, the chief and the deputy chief will give you today. I promise you that this is not the last you will be hearing from me. I implore you to look, please. I almost forgot. Brought with me today a permanent marker. Before the chief and deputy chief hand over any more of my or my children's personal protected information, I would like him to be aware of the Privacy Act, which is a federal law that states without my permission, you can not get that information out. This will not happen again it's for you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Can I bring these up? Uh, what? Yes. Yeah, why don't you? Anyone else from the audience? If not, I'll move on to the consent agenda. Approval of payroll, March 16th through the 31st. Anybody have any questions? Call for a motion that we approve the payroll. So moved. Motion made by Koivinen, supported by Drob. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. No public hearings, no unfinished business. J1, under new business, appoint Lewis Hippolt to the position of operator maintenance worker. Jerry, then we got a post for a mechanic again? Yeah, this was an internal posting, and mm -hmm. he was the oldest qualified person that wanted to call. And going on operator maintenance, so now we'll have to post internally for the mechanic position. Before you can go. Okay. Okay. So I, we're not going to appoint him until, I mean, he could be appointed now yeah. if he gets a job, but we're going to wait until uh, you get a mechanic? a mechanic filled before he can move on. What is that going to take a month if you're lucky? It'll be a while. Yeah. That's... Anybody have any questions? A call for a motion that we appoint Louis Hippel to the position of operator maintenance worker. So motion made by Rousey. Do I have a support? No support. Support by Koivinen. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number two, request from Chief Koivinen to sell forfeited vehicle. No, that rig is no use to us, eh, Chief? I don't know, man. Okay. Call for a motion that we grant the Chief's request to sell this forfeited vehicle in the usual manner. So moved. Made by Lillis. Do you have a support? Worked by Hadrava. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item number three, access agreement amendment between United Taconite and the City of Edward for 4th of July fireworks. That came down to the wire, I think, last year, didn't it? It yes. did. And now they're just <laughs> thinking ahead, and John Marcaccini sent that to me and asked for you to approve it with the hopes that all will be a status quo with um, 4th of July like it was last year. So. Yep. I will so move. I will support. Motion made by Koivinen, support by Drava. Approve this agreement. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number four, pre-termination hearing for Sergeant Jesse Howe. Is that the closed session now? Yeah, Mayor. So what we should do is uh, we do need to discuss some data that's considered not public data. Uh, and there is a provision of the open meeting law that allows the council to go into closed session. 
that provision is cited here in the agenda that we will go into closed session uh, to review that specific data with the council. And then uh, once we come out of that closed session, we re reconvene the meeting, and then you would uh, call for uh, the pre-termination hearing is really what we call a due process hearing. Mm -hmm. And uh, any employee who's covered by a union contract or is a tenured public employee uh, they have a right to a due process hearing before a final decision is made by the council. What that due process hearing is, is basically simply an opportunity for the employee to address the decision maker uh, before the final decision is rendered. It appears that officer or sergeant Hall is not here to do that, nor is his union representative, but we do have to actually, on the open record, public record, indicate that there could be a due process hearing and ask if uh, Sergeant Hall has anything to uh, say to the city council or would like to share with the city council before you make the decision. It's completely his choice whether he wants to do that or not. He does not have to do that. It's simply his opportunity to address the council before the uh, termination decision, uh, before you decide whether or not to terminate him. And, um, I, you know, his, uh, uh, Ms. Hall is here already. Maybe that's what. That's, maybe that's all they intend to do. Maybe they don't intend to actually address the council as part of uh, the process hearing. But again, that's completely their choice. So first thing we'll do is go into closed session. We'll go through that data under that particular provision of the open meeting law that allows for a closed session. Then we'll come back out and have the due process hearing. Okay, at this point, I will suspend the regular council meeting and we will reconvene after we come out of closed session. point I'd like to reconvene the regular of the City Council meeting and open up the hearing if anyone has any comments the person in question or his representation now is the time have any comments or statements if not I'll close the hearing move on to item number five consider Sergeant Jesse how employment termination does anybody have call for a motion that we terminate or well with the information we have I'll make the, uh, the hardest decision we can possibly make and I will recommend that we terminate at this point do I have a support to that motion? Uh, support with request for a friendly amendment. Uh, could we extend his termination date to May 1st, 2020, keep him on a paid administrative leave so that would uh, allow him an opportunity to get some medical uh, coverage for the month of May? Absolutely. You amended your motion? I'll amend Any further discussion? Anybody else have any changes? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number six. We have a donation request from the Eveleth Gilbert class of 2020. Senior grad project parenting. Mitch, did you look at this? If that uh, qualifies? Yeah, just, just looking at it here. Yeah, it's not Do we still have a committee that looks at these things? Uh, I think we used to have a committee that would consider these. Yeah, I well, think it's. We do, and they would look at the statute, the charitable gambling. You know, we used, yeah, and it doesn't meet the charitable gambling statute. At least. I, I would say if it doesn't fall within the you know, purview of the, you know, because under the charitable gambling OCD, you see there's specific, specific yeah. statutory reasons where we can make contributions from uh, the charitable gambling proceeds. Um, well, that's the main source for where we, the city can make charitable donations. But again, it has to fall within one of those very specific statutory provisions. And, uh, and, it, and my understanding is it what wouldn't. So I don't, you know, it's obviously with everything going on with the pandemic, it's a, it's a great cause for what they're doing, but I just don't think it's a matter of what we can donate. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, it's... Uh, this is probably this year. These are the only classes all over. Probably won't get a graduation ceremony. That is a first. 
Can you figure out what our is? No. Like donate to the Elks and the Elks donate to them? No, Elks and the Elks Maybe they should talk to the Elks. You know, maybe they, you know, they're just coming to All the right. city because they figure we can and we really can't. And so maybe really want to do something for them. because our pull tab, the, the pull tabs and stuff in town are mostly from the Elks. So yeah. maybe they could spin something around through them. What we have to get is kind of a service like the donation for the baseball. They would have some baseball yeah. clinics for the I mean, we, kids. We so we're getting something for what we're okay. paying. We I, but I don't know what you do here. Jerk, can we put the flags up if they do get them on our posts and stuff? Yeah. I mean, that would be our contribution to do maybe that, and maybe we can get the else to or something. I think that's probably the best we can do is we yeah. can offer some campaign services to assist yeah. the Elks. If they in prominent places in the city and then work with the Elks to see what they might be able to donate as a, you know, a charitable organization in the city that does that type of thing. Yeah, and, and just explain to them that we can't give cash, but we can give our services. Well, what if the class would organize a community cleanup just a day, come yeah. out and pick we, up and stuff? We can donate would that make it legitimate? Well, so it wouldn't be a donation. We could make, um, we could sort of pay them. We could make, you know, because we're getting, we're getting school actually something for somebody for to come do work for us. Right. I think yep. that, yeah. Yes. I mean, if there would be some, something you could do there in exchange for some community service. Lord knows yeah. we could use it. There's, yeah. you know, the wind is blowing stuff everywhere, and I know that the guys probably don't want to go out and pick some things up. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have some grass that, that could be raked. And they have the time. Because, uh, like, like I said, I know in the past they've done certain things like that. Through the classes things, yeah. got out, and even if they went through the cemetery and picked things up, you know, something like that. Or, yeah, my cemetery took a hit for some headstones. A lot, a lot of landscaping to do. Oh yeah, we got a training period with the new guys. <laughs> Jack, you want to get a hold of the school maybe and see if we can absolutely do something like that to help them? It's with this unfortunate dilemma everybody's in. And at this time, anybody from the council on any committee reports or commission reports? We had a golf course kind of a meeting uh, the other day, and uh, I'm going to let Jerry take it from there. The course made it through the winter time very well. Our greens look spectacular. We're going to open up Thursday morning, and I'll let Jared take it from there. Yeah, we'll just have some uh, rules and regulations uh, for the golfers when they come on and golf. And we made some signs up um, that we'll be installing. It's kind of one person to a cart. Uh, John said he'll give a deal for the second cart so you don't have to rent you know, two carts at whole place. Uh, no sharing with golf clubs. Uh, we're not going to be removing flags on the greens at all, so and we're going to tip, tip the cups upside down so there's only a little uh, space and a ball can go in so you don't have to reach your hand down in there so it keeps it a little cleaner. Uh, we won't have the divot, uh, divot markers up out. Uh, guys will be out uh, every morning cleaning up divots. And uh, John will be getting a, a credit card machine that he can use over the phone and take reservations and key time and try to, try to spread them out a little bit so we don't have a bunch of people waiting at one time. And he's going to keep the clubhouse closed for now. And if the governor loosens things up a little bit, then we can have you know one at a time come in the clubhouse, possibly order food. But he's not going to have food service or, or drink service right now. So. You forgot the most important one, no licking the flag. We had to say that just a little levity, to, you know. It's it's a bad time out there, and you know, just. Well, we don't get all involved, but there'll be some restrictions. They they won't be back. No. I'm sure everybody will be happy to see it all. Everybody, I see more more dogs and people walking than I've ever knew there was in town. Yeah. <laughs> but see, nothing else to do. That's that's no. the problem. The weather's getting nicer. People are getting. Impatient. Well, anything further, Chief? Brian, you got anything oh, else? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this we're going around. I was just going to mention um, there was a teleconference with the Shared Services Committee last night. Unfortunately, I was not able to. Uh, 
teleconference with those folks, but I did get a briefing this morning. And as I understand it, um, Gilbert had a representative on the call and uh, um, they expressed a desire to continue um, with training and SOGs and equipment, but they are not interested in uh, any further involvement with um, any type of, of merger. So the committee decided that um, Eveleth and Phil will be going forward uh, with the full merger plan. And uh, committees were assigned to uh, address different issues, governance issues, uh, media issues, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so there will be another meeting in the uh, first part of me, or, or more towards the middle of me, uh, probably another teleconference to uh, get a little bit further along with that. That's been a long, long road there too, you know. It doesn't seem like we've gotten very far. There's been a little wheel spinning, no doubt, but I think well, now, that, now that we're thing. on this particular track, I think it'll go ahead a lot faster. Is this absolutely official now? Yeah. Our neighboring I watched are I watched their council meeting and they wanted to roll on the fence and, and still participate a little bit and I think Brian is right we just have to move on without them yeah yes you know you can't you know you can't have your cake you need it too I mean Otherwise, you're either in or you're out 30 years, 30 years yes now, we'll still be at this point you we'll still got mutual aid and all that kind of yeah. stuff so I mean yeah that's that yeah, I mean we're still gonna go forward with some of the sharing things you know that we can do with the training and so forth it's just a you know the um, with regard to the grant opportunity they will they will not be eligible for the the grant anymore for that training money okay. or the uh, sog money so we're uh, we're still not you know closing the door on them because mm -hmm. at some point in the future they may decide that they want to become a part of it and and we would welcome them on board once they decide right. they want to do that and uh, if I remember correctly, that's not just for Gilbert either, it's central age. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Look up their ponies to the, to the wagon, you know, in the morning area. Absolutely. You yeah, know, when, when you see a fire and you see all the towns together, I mean, they all work, they, they work great together. It's even like with our other police, they you know, run in with the sheriffs and stuff. Everybody just works so good together. Yeah, and a sign of the times, you know, everybody's yes. getting smaller. Anyway, it'll, it'll we'll start moving a lot faster, you know, once we have this cleared up. We'll yeah. See. But still, it's a process that takes two or three years easy, if we're lucky. And there's only two of us, we get along with the so things might be sort of smooth for us. I, I kind of think so. They had a good working relationship with them. I think that'll be smooth. So, you know, two or three years, I think it's really reasonable to have it all spread out, in my opinion. Well, you got a lot of years. Got a lot of years behind that opinion. <laughs> John, you got anything to add? Bradley? Not this point. Joe? No, I'm good. And we got a workshop Thursday, Jackie. Yes, we do. Are we going to work on our uh, loan program? Is that? Yes, we are. Our assistance loan program for the businesses. We're going to use the revolving loan fund. I think it's great as long as they don't have to jump through hoops. Well, that's that's the idea why we Quick got involved. Quick and fast. Because there's been some ugly situations. We're going to discuss what kind of hoops you have to go through, and I'll have a write-up for you. We'll have some conversations. <laughs> They'll be attainable. The hoop will be. Yeah. The hoop will be low. <laughs> better be off the law. I can't even write my life that high. Better at low bridges. It's something that has to be done because these businesses are in bad know, shape. This is bad, boy. Somebody's on the hook for that. Yeah. Well, Chief, do you have anything else to add? Not tonight, Jerry? I'll just keep you up to date. Um, we're almost caught up with uh, finishing up on sweeping the streets. Hopefully by the end of the week we'll be starting in alleys. We'll do the parking lots. We have quite a bit of landscaping out there, so... <laughs> this year, but, um, if anybody at home hears this and has some uh, landscaping issues that we dug up some dirt, give me a call. You guys did a good job. <laughs> El, you got anything to add? No. Mitch, you got anything else to add? No, Jackie? No, ma'am. Steph, you got anything? No, Anyone from the audience? 
If not, I'm going to adjourn the meeting.